and came up with the idea to pr produce holograms based on the hidden 3D distance information in the grayscale of the image. He formed a team of experts and they succeeded in creating the first hologram of the face in 2005, followed in 2006 by life-size holograms of the front and the back of the body. Long regards from Dr. Seuss to all the people here and all his friends that he knows. He's uh, recuperating from heart attack and uh, he's doing uh, well. And uh, we just continue to uh, pray for him and for his recovery. Uh, it is a deep honor for me to be able to represent him here at the conference. Ian Wilson uh, developed a theory in the 70s that based on one of the names given to the cloth of Edessa, namely Tetra uh, Diplon, or doubled in four, uh, had very strong indications that the cloth of Edessa and the Shroud of Turin are identical. Tetra Diplon is a word that is not in normal usage in the Greek language but is only used for the cloth of Edessa. Ian Wilson was educated as a historian at uh, Magdalen College, Oxford, UK. When the shroud is doubled at four and mounted on a board, only the face is visible. The length of the shroud is 442 centimeters with 113 centimeters. And when you double the shroud at four, the sizes are 113 by 50. 55 and a quarter centimeters. The doubled in four uh, crease lines visible in raking light were identified by Dr. John Jackson in 1979, consistent with this one time doubled in four folding arrangement. In his latest book, The Shroud, Fresh Light on the 2000 Year Old Mystery, Wilson gives a lot of proofs of his theory. three years uh, since 2008, I did a lot of research on the 3D images that were created, including the holograms and lenticular images that were produced. The conversion from 2D to 3D was done based on black and white photographs of 1931 made by Giuseppe Henri, and in the process I found that around the head of the man of the shroud a halo was visible. It was very similar to the halo that is visible around the head when uh, you double the shroud in four, four times two folds, cover it with a precious cloth and make a round opening to make the face visible. Now, I want to explain that when we talk about halo here, we're not talking about that little circle you see around the little angels, okay? We're talking about a shading that exists on the shroud image that is surrounding the head change in shading around the head. I don't know what other word you use, but halo, I think you could feel free. In artworks, it shows up as a halo. Uh, and we'll get to that in a moment. The ultraviolet photographs made by Miller clearly showed uh, this halo, and later investigations included raking light photographs and also images by the so-called image overlay technique by Aldo Garcia. I'm sorry about the pronunciation of some of these names, and Alan Wanger uh, also showed, uh, uh, showing, was showing this halo. In 2010, this was also confirmed by Tom de Mahala and Avignon, uh, Avignon uh, Dannon. Uh, uh, studying photographs of Vern Miller and Giuseppe Henri. The 
reason this halo is visible around the head in a variety of photographs is that according to the theory of Ian Wilson, during hundreds of years, the shroud was doubled in four and the only part exposed to light during viewings was the round opening showing the face. Natural aging will turn a new a, a white linen over time into a yellowish color and the fact that most of the shroud was hidden and only the shroud around opening showing the face was exposed to different light conditions means that the linen in this area aged more than the rest of the shroud and this shows up especially in the ultraviolet photographs of Vernon Miller taken in 1978. So what he did was he took uh, the folding of the cloth and then he took that image and he scribed a circle And that circle is chosen to be centered on the width of the cloth when it's folded into that configuration. So when you take a good sized photograph of the whole shroud and double it in four, you will find on one side the image of the face only, reconstructing that uh, what the Byzantine artist did in the past when framing the image and finding the center of the circle around the head. So the vertical line, you will first make a vertical line in the middle of the cloth, and then make a horizontal line across both eyes. Artistically speaking, the center of the face is between both eyes. The vertical and horizontal lines at the center of the construction of the circle cut out of the cloth in order to make the shroud face visible. Thus, Around the opening is the middle of the cloth. If you follow the vertical, inter, uh, the vertical center of the circle, it will end up in the corner of the right eye, hmm. not in the artistic center of the face. The reason for this is that the image of the man on the shroud is not exactly in the middle of the cloth, but this placed about two to three centimeters to the left of the median line. Also, a second observation is that the border on the top of the halo, or round circular area, is smaller than the border at the bottom. The diameter of the halo was measured to, by me to be about 48 centimeters on the images he was using. In our, in our presentation, we show a series of images of the Mandelian cloth of Edessa, where indeed, The upper border is shown to be smaller than the bottom one. So the artist copied these details very truthfully. After that, we show a series of images of coins and mosaics of the Byzantine Empire of the face and image of Jesus Christ with a halo and measuring the center of the halo, you will observe that this is exactly in the corner of the right eye. The center of the halo does not coincide with the center of the face. Again, the right eye, right eye, right eye, right eye. This one was kind of off tilt, but you go from the center of the circle and follow it down parallel out in the right eye, right eye, even on the coin. <coughs> so, 70 years ago, Paul Vignon identified a series of markings on the face and the head of the image of the man of the shroud, recurring in Byzantine portraits of Jesus and seemingly deriving from features visible on the shroud. He identified 15 of these markings 
and did quite some research of Byzantine artworks to identify these. In the 1980s, Dr. Alan Wanger continued with this work and investigated images of Jesus Christ on Byzantine coins. He found the same occurrence of these markings. In some instances, the marks in the artworks appear in mirror image, probably from the negative. We don't know. What is of interest here is the big uh, feature number 15. Over on the left side, at the bottom, toward the middle bottom. In, uh, in his writings, uh, Vignon described this as the transverse line across the throat. This is exactly the area where I concentrated my research because according to my investigations in the 3D field, there was an oval solid object with, uh, on the surface in relief, three Hebrew letters. I first did a study on, on many photographs from different photographers who took photographs uh, the recent, in the recent hundred years uh, of the shroud. Always the outline of the object is present. Next I study all the previous 3D uh, studies done by Jackson and Jumper in 77, also the 3D studies that were done in Italy in the 1970s by Professor Camarelli and uh, Nella Valosino. In all the 3D images under the beard, there was a clearly visible vertical relief. This suggests that there in, is indeed the presence of some solid object. Last but not least, Peter Schumacher did an investigation for me in 2010 of this area with his VP8 image analyzer. This investigation was repeated in 2011. The VP8 image analyzer was used in 1976, of course, by Jackson and Jumper. Uh, this instrument translates difference in brightness of an image to vertical relief. Only the image of the man of the shroud gives uh, this particular response. Any other photograph or person it gives a lot of distortion because the instrument was not made for the purpose of making anatomically correct 3D plots from, from 2D images, but simply to map brightness vari variations in XYZ graphics. The fact that the shroud image produces this result is another unique quality of the shroud image. The conclusion of Pete Schumacher was, I'm quoting myself here, using uh, minimal <laughs> classification image processing techniques involving isometric projection and level slicing functions of the VP8 image analyzer. We were able to assess the region of interest, ROI, as defined by Dr. Petrus Soons, it is apparent that some object having some pattern detail within that object resides within the defined region of interest. Pete Schumacher was able to confirm the presence of the image outline of an object within the region of interest. This oval solid object was placed under the beard of the man on the shroud and because the anatomy in that region with the two collarbones higher than the throat area in a, in a person in a horizontal position, the object uh, was in an oblique position. Scientists believe that the image was formed collimated, meaning a vertical upwards and downwards, so that the front and underside being higher and nearer to the cloth would uh, be uh, projected with a double line because of the thickness of the oval object and the upper side like a vaguer uh, visible line because of a further distance to the surface of the shroud. And that is exactly what we observed in the image under the beard in the photographs. In the presentation, we show a series of coins of the period of the reign of Justinius II and also several coins from the reign of Emperor Michael III. Uh, that was 842 to 867. The previous one was 692 to 695. Uh, uh, where this double line is perfectly visible and interpreted by 
the artist as the upper edge of a tunica. It is worth mentioning that these gold coins are the size of a quarter, so the artist put in very tiny details that obviously were taken from studying the shroud image very detailed. In the uh, positive image of the shroud, the left corner on the end of the horizontal transverse double line curves upward in an upward direction and was seemingly interpreted by artists uh, who had access to the image as a fold in the upper edge of a tunica. The same seemingly happened with the double line that is interpreted by artists as the upper edge of a tunica. It is worth mentioning, again, that the head looks disembodied and floating because there is no image visible of the upper thorax. There are many examples of Byzantine art where this fold is being represented on exactly the same location where in the positive image of the shroud, the upward curving uh, left corner is located. All these little details uh, make the case of Ian Wilson very strong indeed. Ian Wilson's theory that the cloth of Edessa and the Shroud of Turin are one and the same is being reinforced by these discoveries. The halo found in various photographs representing the area of the shroud opening in the tetradiplon and showing the head of the image of the man on the shroud, the center of the circle of the round <coughs> opening in the tetradiplon, the center is located in the corner of the right eye, positive image, that is also seen in the images of the Mandelian and the face of Christ uh, with halo in Byzantine art. Transversal double line under the beard of the image with the upwards going edge interpreted by the Byzantine artists as the upper edge of a tunica with an upward going fold on the left side and also encountered in Byzantine coins and images of the face of Jesus Christ. These new uh, discoveries prove that Ian Wilson is right in his theory that the cloth of Edessa and the Shroud of Turin are the same. This dates the Shroud of Turin back to at least the year 525 AD. This also proves that the little piece of cloth that was used for the radiocarbon dating of 1988 was not representative of the whole Shroud of Turin. I will tell you that uh, I don't uh, read other writings in other languages. So what he says about uh, what those letters mean, I, I don't know. I'll have to trust him or someone else who speaks that language and writes that language, okay? But to me, uh, the quote is correct. That there is something there. I don't know what it is, but obviously other artists had seen it as well. And it was detectable using very conventional, basic pattern recognition element uh, analysis uh, using modern electronics technology. I wish he could be here to answer questions for you, and I know he would have stretched this out another 12 minutes, but I'll give everybody a chance to stretch. Oh, go ahead. Yes. Can you go back to the Hebrew letters from the first place that you went by real fast? Yeah, I'll
so I don't know. Letters. Well, there's, there's a couple of different versions of it, too. Oh, really? I hope you improved it. I wrote to him. I said, you're matching the words of the wrong letters. I wouldn't know, so I couldn't argue it. I would suggest that you uh, take that up with him and ask him, and I'm sure that he will so he respond. Does believe that Chris I, I'm not going there because I don't know, okay? So I'm not going to put Dr. Petrus Soons in a spot because of something I don't know, okay? I'm just here to read what he, read, what he gave, okay? So I thank you very much for your attention. I do like to thank the work uh, relative to the center.